Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome back to the Cyber Underground. I'm your host, Dave, the Cyber Guy, Dave Stevens. I'm an instructor out at Kapiolani Community College for the University of Hawaii. And I'm here with my favorite co-host, Hal, the Network Guy. Welcome, brother. Thanks. Good to have you back. back. <laughs> Great to be here. Hal teaches with me as well. Uh, we teach the cybersecurity curriculum at Kapiolani Community College. And uh, we do this show quite often to bring people up to date about what they should be worried about and things that keep me up at night and how to avoid being hacked, which is pretty much what the show is about, right? The latest hacks. Uh, this show's about our bitter enemies in our new Cold War. We have two of them. We have Russia, and we have, uh, not surprisingly, North Korea. We haven't heard a lot from China in a long time, which, yeah. which could mean two things. One, they backed off a little, or two, they got really good. And that should be really scary. That's the scary That's one. That's the scary one. If they're like in there and they're like, no, no, shh, we'll attack later. Uh, that's that's kind of scary. But um, Russia hit us with VPN filter. Now let's talk about VPN filter. What's going on with VPN filter? What do you hear? What do you know so far? So uh, from, from what I've been uh, reading, it's, it's targeting uh, primarily consumer-grade uh, Wi-Fi router. They call that Soho, right? Small office, home office. Small Soho, office, home office. Right. Yep. Uh, so uh, it it actually it, it's 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 a very sophisticated piece of software. It's not just a, a simple malware. It has uh, it has various stages that it can it, it can develop different capabilities. Uh, and I guess the uh, the FBI had sent out a, a warning telling people that everybody should should reboot their their router in, in, in case the, the other, the, they had an, an infection of a VPN filter. It turns out uh, they, they've gathered some more information and they said, oh no, uh, that's not going to work. It actually persists through a reboot. If you want to get rid of it, you, you may have to actually do a, a factory reset uh, and, and, and reboot and then you have to completely reconfigure your, uh, your, your router again. So well, think how you can pain, save but. the settings, right? Uh, well, you, most of them. You could save it externally, or you can print it out, or you can probably find a way, you know, to to, to hold on to it. So, but you still have to go back in and reconfigure. Once you go to factory reset, then everything goes back to default, and you have to go back in and you know, enter whatever IP addresses, whatever you know, special configurations uh, that you that you had. But uh, so this initial stage. Uh, this initial infection, I guess, is, 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 is just the back door that lets everything else come in. So that's clearly, I mean, the, the one that you want to, that you want to get rid of. If you can get rid of that, then Most uh, of the stuff goes you probably away. Won't, okay. won't make it to the other stage. But this can do everything from monitoring all the traffic going through your router to actually injecting malicious traffic into your router. So, uh, the one of the examples I read was that you're on your banking site and it says that your uh, shows you that your balance is five thousand dollars when actually it's zero because they just they just <laughs> took it off. But it, but you still see what they want you to see. Right. right? So right. you can't trust even what you're seeing com coming through your router anymore once you've got this infection. So. Now we should we should emphasize also if you're going to factory reset a mm -hmm. router. There's two things you should do. One, don't do it over Wi-Fi, because Wi-Fi is going to go away. It's mm -hmm. going to be reset to nothing, right? So plug in uh, your Ethernet cord from your laptop or your desktop computer directly into the router. And the other thing is, take the router off the internet. Mm -hmm. Disconnect that, because when you factory reset, you go back down to defaults. Which is probably which probably means zero security setting. Right, it's so default you, username, password. Yeah. Everybody knows it's and admin, admin. Yeah, you don't want the malware to just get right back in again because that <laughs> that defeats the purpose. Right? So it, you take it offline first. Uh, by the way, uh, at least with my family, tell everybody what you're doing first. So just <laughs> <laughs> just yank it off. <laughs> I would actually make the recommendation. I think it's a good idea. Whenever you're doing any kind of reconfigured. Uh, any, it, any kind of major re, um, reconfiguration of your router, it's probably a good idea to do it uh, wired, you know, with a laptop wired to uh, the router, rather than doing it uh, over the Wi-Fi. And if, and if you 
you're going to do that, then, then you don't even have to, uh, you, you can really limit, you know, the admin access and, 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 and how it's, you know, how it can be connected to in administrative mode and how it can be configured. I and mean, it's a little bit more of a pain. You have to unplug it and, you know, plug a cable in and set up a laptop. But it, it's, it's just a, a, a good secure, right? you, you can be sure that, you know, nothing strange is going on if it's just you and the laptop and you're, yeah, it's very intimate. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 it can be intimate. <laughs> yeah, I like I like the that uh, philosophy anyway because we're supposed to exercise least privilege, mm -hmm. right, with access control, and so you want to limit what everyone can do on your router. So the administrative stuff should only be you and your router, and nobody else should be able to get on there. And we should also uh, tell you that every once in a while you should go onto your router and check things out. Uh, you can uh, do things like see who's got a lease on your DHCP addresses, count how many of them are there, and count how many devices there are in your house. If you've got more IP addresses in there than there are devices in your house, guess what? somebody else is on your, your network and you need to get them in the heck off. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also, and what I also recommend, uh, and maybe I get your advice on this, is, um, and this is a pain in the butt, Go get the, the MAC address, the electronic code, the hexadecimal code for each unique device in your house and whitelist that mm -hmm. in your, uh, on, on your router. So that's a whitelist that only those devices are supposed to be able to connect. I would absolutely recommend doing that. But if you have a good intelligent router, it will actually, it will list them for you. And all you need to do is basically enable, Just authorize those. enable this one, enable this one, and then disable anything that's not on that list. But now, if only you after you've just configured it. I mean, if yeah. it's been on for a while, again, if you have more MAC addresses than you have devices no. on the network. <laughs> I would do this on initial configuration. So All set right. the thing up, connect your laptop to it, go on, get the, the uh, MAC address, add it to the whitelist, and disable everything else. And then the, the next device that needs, that needs to connect, do the same thing. So it, it's a little bit of a pain for the, you know, because you, you may have several devices that, that need, need to connect, but once you've got all of, of the, uh, the Wi-Fi devices that regularly connect to your network in there, then you, you don't have to do that, you know, again, it's not something you have to keep updating or anything. Now, a lot of people have uh, guests that come over to the house and they want to use the Wi-Fi network and they, they're apprehensive about handing out the Wi-Fi password, but most routers now come with a guest network. Yeah. It's a separate Wi-Fi network. It's kind of a VLAN or virtual LAN, local area network, right? Where it's, it's logically separated and the mm -hmm. two can't touch each other. So if you have devices on your regular Wi-Fi, people on the guest Wi-Fi, those devices can't see each other. Exactly. So it's a safe way to do it and you can have a different password. Different password mm -hmm. <laughs> to that network. Different passwords, different configurations, different, uh, you know, uh, MAC address whitelists. I right. mean, you can pretty much have a, a complete, you know, virtual network. That's and a lot of work. It 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 can be, but it's uh, it's worth it. It's worth it. Yeah. If if you know if if you're going to get infected with something like this, that that could be a, you know a real major uh, problem for you. It, it's you would probably be happy that you, you you spend a few minutes you know setting up some some of these more advanced configurations on your uh, your router. I would think so, and, and what I get from most people, uh, just regular, ordinary people, uh, most of them say, well, nobody really wants me. You know, I, I have no value. And I would counter with, yes, you do have value. Mm -hmm. There's a couple things that you do have value. If I'm casting a wide net and I have a, a very large uh, piece of malware that can do quite a bit, every little dollar is going to help beef up my bank account. Also, I can use you as a proxy to attack somebody else. Mm -hmm. As a jump off point. Right. So if they try to trace me back, they trace it back to your router and some other poor person's router and some other poor guy's router, and you never get back to you know, the, the actual perpetrator who's, right. you know, as you said, sitting in Russia somewhere. So forensically, it's hard to find the actual person. Also, you could be used as a bot. Mm -hmm. Like a, a, someone could zombify your system Absolutely. and use it as an attack vector to you know, Amazon.com and you get 50,000 routers at the same time or a million routers all going to browse Amazon.com at the same time. You could essentially take it offline for a couple of days. And that brings us full circle because this VPN filter, one of the capabilities is to take over command, command and control in, in these uh, these devices that you know have been compromised can then be, be be used as part of a botnet to attack someone else. So you don't want to become part of that. So this Either. is actually worth it because when you're a botnet, you might not know, 
except that your internet slows down to a curl, and your computer seems to be very slow, and nothing's reacting very well, and nothing's behaving uh, the right way, and it's a little inconvenient for you, but whoever's being attacked is down. So they're losing probably, you know, essentially millions of dollars, and, and that's usually malicious, or someone's being blackmailed. There was a couple of kids doing that for blackmail. Yeah, you could pay them a couple of grand, and they wouldn't do a DDoS attack on you. Uh, thankfully, they got arrested. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I haven't heard if they're prosecuted yet. I hope so. Got to set an example. So that's that's uh, that's something you got to do to the router. Now, the, the router usually to do a factory reset. When I tell people on the back, there's usually that little pinhole, mm -hmm. and you stick a paperclip piece in the pinhole while it's powered on. Hold it down for about 30 seconds, usually, yeah, and then release it and power off the device. And here's the important part: most people just unplug it and plug it back in. You should wait. You need to wait. So they're inside there's uh, capacitors, they're electrolytic uh, uh, material that uh, carry a charge for several seconds, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes 30 seconds or a minute. And you need to bleed that off. So all the active memories is gone. Then plug your device back in, and it's just like you get out of the box, right? Yeah. Then, uh, like a, a Linksys router will let you in the web interface save your settings to a text file in a certain format or an XML file, I can't remember now. But then when you reboot the device after factory reset, you can load those settings back in. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I wouldn't recommend doing that, actually. I'd start from scratch. Because you might get settings that were maliciously altered, right? Unless you go through and understand exactly what those settings are and say, oh yeah, I set that, I set that. Right. Um, but yeah, I, if, if someone had, for example, added, you know, a, a, extra MAC addresses. That, or port that forwarding. Know, or some kind of port forwarding. Right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and they could get in. Or they activated the, what is that, uh, remote WAN? Uh, Wide area network uh, remote capability, so you could log in from the internet. If that's active mm -hmm. and you don't see that flag, you've just enabled it. Um, sure. Or they could reset your username and password to default. <laughs> By the way, uh, you've been to showdan.io? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's very that. interesting. So our audience should know showdan.io is a website where you can uh, go see all the routers and uh, IoT devices out there that are on the internet, that are actually on the public internet, that have their default username and password enabled. Which I think is useful and scary at the same time. Because <laughs> when, you, when you see the IP address on Shodan, you can do a geolocate on that IP address and see where that IP address is. And if you get a little bit more information, you could zero in on that person mm -hmm. and hack that person. And uh, that's a terrible thing, but then it's a good thing at the same time. It's one of those conundrums. How do we, it's open source versus keep the secret so no one gets hurt. But if you release the secret, everyone can protect themselves. It would be nice if everybody knew about that site so they would actually go and look and say, oh, no, that's, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> I better fix that. Right. That's good. That would be hard. Uh, OK, let's, uh, let's talk about the next big threat that's out there right now. And the reason, the reason I bring up uh, North Korea all the time is because North Korea, Russia, China, they've all done this. They're attacking. However, they don't attack to the level of say, a cyber 9-11 event. It's not cyber Pearl Harbor. So the, the, the footprint of the attack never sets off those big alarm bells. Oh, we're under attack, it's war. So we're always handling these on one-off. Like, oh, this is just Sony Pictures. This is just the Office of Personnel Management, OPM. And this is just this company, uh, Home Depot, Target, whatever. But it's a test. It, it, ransomware, let's do this one. Ransomware, when they attacked um, the UK, uh, they did uh, almost okay. the entire national health system, NHS uh, over the UK, and they collected a total of, what, $30,000 in ransomware? That's a test. Yeah, they, okay. they, they weren't in it for the, for the... They just wanted to know if they could press a button, could they get something done? Mm -hmm. And it was a successful test. I mean, England should, you know, wake up. You've been probed. It was a proof of concept. It was a good proof of concept. Uh, oh, I shouldn't use that word probe. This could have negative connotations. <laughs> Alien probe. No, uh, OK, we're going to take a little break, come back uh, right after we pay some bills. Until then, stay safe.
Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Gabrielli. I'm the host for Young Talents Making Way here on FinTech Hawaii. We talk every Tuesday at 11 a.m. about things that matter to tech, matter to science, to the people of Hawaii with some extraordinary guests, the students of our schools who are participating in science fair. So Young Talents Making Way every Tuesday at 11 a.m. only on FinTech Hawaii. Mahalo. Hi, I'm Pete McGuinness Mark, and every Monday at one o'clock, I'm the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Research in Manoa. And at that program, we bring to you a whole range of new scientific results from the university, ranging from everything from exploring the solar system to looking at the Earth from space, going underwater, talking about earthquakes and volcanoes, and other things which have a direct relevance not only to Hawaii, but also to our economy. So please try and join me. One o'clock on a Monday afternoon for Think Tech Hawaii's Research in Manoa. And see you then. Welcome back to the Cyber Underground. I'm Dave the Cyber Guy here with Hal the Network Guy. Welcome back. Let's talk about um, how a civilization dies, not with a bang, but with a whisper. <laughs> and uh, this, is, this is definitely how it's going to happen. You know, I used to think that World War III was going to be a huge cyber attack. Then it was going to be some kind of EMP blast where we lose all our electronics, and then it's down to sticks, guns, and knives. You know, conventional warfare. I'm beyond that now. I think that the, the whole take over the Ukraine by Russia, the Crimea, uh, I think that that's the way we, we can lose countries now. Somebody wants it, they engineer a way to sway the public to think that's an okay thing. And then they just start attacking little stuff. Never enough to set off the alarm bells to say, we're in a full-scale war, so no one's ever thinking, call out the troops, until it's too late. It's bit by bit. Bit by bit. Uh, it's how do you eat an elephant? You know? And uh, you know, I, I, I compare the Crimea takeover to uh, Sudetenland in 1938. Uh, for those of our audience members out here that don't know history, please go read a book. Um, anyway, same thing, um, Germany took back the sedate land and then uh, the Prime Minister of UK said, oh, it's okay, just stop there. And then in 1939, well, World War II, Hitler mm -hmm. takes over Poland, now Poland and now it's him. rocks into all the other countries uh, and takes France. But um, I don't want that to happen to the United States and it seems like we're ready for the big attack. You know, we're ready for the big stuff. EMP blasts, nuclear missiles, uh, land troops landing in a, on the mainland, uh, naval attacks and satellite attacks and bombs. But this little stuff where we can, someone can sneak in and turn off the water. Like mm -hmm. How long can a city last without water? Not a long time, right? So when these little attacks come up, it's a big thing to me. And uh, we have a new North Korea attack. And North Korea, uh, according to the DHS, they call them Hidden Cobra, because mm -hmm. they have to nickname everything. Uh, <laughs> and it has to be a cool name. It has to be a cool one, yeah. There's no hidden tulip. <laughs> yeah, my, my code name is Dave. Uh, it's Dave. <laughs> so they have a new one called Type Frame. Uh, now, they, they had an evil one called Bank Shot a little while ago, if you remember this one, where, and it was aptly named. Bank Shot was a proxy service. They'd install it in your network. It would, it would not do anything to your network. It would not damage anything. It wasn't malicious. It would just sit there and be a relay for messages that they wanted to send and receive. So you couldn't track their other activities. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was kind of hard to find, actually. You had, to, had a signature. You had to go hunt for it. You had to do deep scans in your network. Now they have this one called TypeFrame. Uh, right now it's a Windows 32 executable, uh, a couple of DLLs, which are dynamic link libraries, mm -hmm. the files that end in .dll that are Windows files. And, and uh, there's a macro virus in a Windows MS Word file. In a Word file, yeah. Yeah, so let's, let's talk about TypeFrame. What have you learned about TypeFrame so far, reading the, well, uh, reading the notifications? Typeframe, yeah, this is from the same group uh, that that brought you WannaCry and <laughs> the, the Sony uh, attack in uh, 2014, uh, and 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 this this again is this is uh, a pretty sophisticated piece of software. It, it can do it has multiple uh, capabilities. It, it can uh, uh, install RAT or 
Remote access. Remote access Trojan, Trojan. Yeah. Uh, which can be used again as to take over a device, to add it to a botnet. So it has a lot of, of similar capabilities to what we talked about with, uh, with the VPN filter. Uh, from what I had read, it, th th this was targeted more, uh, not so much at consumer sites like the VPN filter was, it's more targeted at industrial uh, types of sites. Uh, it was looking for certain protocols that are um, that are usually associated with with more industrial control, uh, but that that's uh, really more scary because, as you said, that that means this is something that you know could be uh, possibly uh, used to turn off water, to mess with nuclear plants, any number of things. To turn so off the industrial uh, control systems that called SCADA. System control and data acquisition modules. They're the human interface between uh, us and very primitive machines like valves that open and close, mm -hmm. heat sensors that will tell you when something's too hot, uh, the speed of a motor. So Stuxnet was one of these viruses. Stuxnet, that yeah. We went in and uh, us in Israel, we created a virus to go into the nuclear reactors in Iran and spin them up so fast that the motors melted because they're stepper motors, and uh, the more steps per second you program into them, the faster they rotate. So that's, that's one of the malicious things you could do if you took over SCADA systems. You could also stop water flow, mm -hmm. overload water flow, create too much pressure. You could do the same to natural gas, which could create havoc. Yes, You absolutely. could do all kinds of evil stuff with electricity, because electricity, if, if there's a one-off anywhere in that circuit, you're gonna get some bad reactions, right? So. One of those things, uh, the electricity one, uh, I'd like to talk about for a second, because this, this is a kind of a concern to me. I know that just a few years ago, most of the eastern seaboard went down because of a couple of power ballasts went out in, I think, the Ohio, Ohio region, and that was part of the Virginia grid. Ah. And that one blackout, because electricity is in a circuit, right? That was the interruption in the circuit that caused everybody else to go down, and there was no backup. I'd, it shocked me that our electrical grid is at, at such a primitive stage at this mm -hmm. day and age that Virginia, the Washington, D.C. area could go down. There's some important places in Virginia. Yeah, that's yeah. Well, somewhat important. I would say, you know, there's a few people there that, that might run the country mm -hmm. from time to time. And I, I would think that there's kind of a lot of important computer stuff going on over there. Uh, I would think so. Yeah, and I would I would imagine everyone's got generators, but only for a little while. And this was a couple of days. I mean, and that's, I mean, I I, I think it was a tree. It wasn't an attack that they know of. It was just a tree. But these control systems that can be hacked now can be used to turn off electrical grids. Now think about a city mm -hmm. with no electricity. Yeah. I don't think I can imagine that. I mean, it, not during my entire lifetime have I lived without electricity. Have you? Except when you're camping? Uh, yeah, and even then, you usually have your cell phone with you or something. Uh, you know. Even when we were kids, we had flashlights with the car. I mean, right? I, yeah. I experienced a, like a 13-hour blackout uh, here on Oahu shortly after I, I moved out here. Oh, the 06 quake. And it, right. it was pretty eye-opening. I mean, there was no cell phone service, there were no elevators to get to my 36th floor uh, <laughs> 36th condo. Floor. <laughs> uh, there, was, there were no electric pumps to pump the water up oh, so, so that water. I could have water for the toilet in the shower. Yeah. It was quite eye-opening as to you know, how fragile uh, you know, some of these things are. People don't realize that. Yeah? You're in a high-rise building and you don't have electricity. You got no water. Mm -hmm. And out here, no AC. Yep. Open the windows and pray for a wind, yeah, and it, it gets pretty miserable sometimes. Uh, that could be a big imposition, right? And, and also, if you turn off the water, I would imagine a civilization would just fall apart immediately. Within a day, if people are fighting over water. Well, people can, could probably survive a few days without food, but how, how long can you survive without water? Uh, it's, it's, it's three to seven days uh, yeah. without actually having a drink of water. And out here, even worse, because it's humid and we, mm -hmm. and we sweat, so uh, we would last even less time. It's, it's not a very long period of time. Whereas with uh, food, I, th I think the maximum you can go is almost 90 days without yeah. food. But uh, who, who said it? Um, um, che Guevara said, every society is only nine meals away from a revolution. 
Mm -hmm. I believe that was his quote, and uh, I totally believe it. I mean, you take away food for three days. And, and people are going to get yeah. pretty unhappy. They're going to get pretty unhappy. The, I guess the, the, the counter to that is if you took away all the water, they're not really going to be fighting much after a couple of days because you know, they can't. They're going to drop like flies. So, you know, well, I guess there's good news on that front. <laughs> <laughs> That's morbid. Okay, let's get away from that. So what can you do to protect yourself? I'm, I got a list of stuff we're going to go over here. Uh, this is kind of common sense stuff, right? So when you're going over your home network or your business network, these are kind of things you should do anyway. Anyway, yeah, anyway. to protect against any type of malware. Right. So, so let's, let's, just, let's just talk about uh, antivirus, which does, it's not just antivirus anymore, right? What should I be installing to protect myself now? Uh, antivirus, but with uh, firewall and with web protection, and I mean a real robust uh, antivirus that looks for more than yeah. just you know file signatures somewhere on on your hard drive. Um, so any of the you know any of the major uh, antivirus companies, but one of the uh, most important things to do that people don't always realize is that you have to continually update that that antivirus. The way that it works is it has a signature. For every known, you know, malware uh, file, and if you're not updating, then you're not getting the new signatures. That means the the newest uh, malware, you're still vulnerable. So it, it's 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 very important to make sure that that you that you keep it updated all the time. And that's one of the things that where our tax dollars are are playing in our favor here. NSA, DHS, FBI. They're all collecting the signatures from these malware. Mm -hmm. uh, you can sign up for US-CERT, mm -hmm. uh, the Computer Emergency uh, Readiness Team uh, for the United States, and they give you emails and send you all these alerts and signatures. NSA has this, uh, um, InfraGuard with the FBI and yeah. Consumer Affairs has this. This is our, our tax dollars at work. We have one minute left. We're not gonna be able to get through this. Okay, so we update your viruses, your virus signatures, update your, uh, your system. So the software, update Windows, software, Mac, the firmware. software right? Um, and use strong passwords. Yes, that, that's, that, that's key. Strong passwords, uh, eliminate any unnecessary services, things that you don't right. need. Or eliminate. software you didn't want to install, don't yeah. install that stuff. Oh, and if you have multiple users on your system, Limit what they can do. Yeah, so, don't make everybody administrator. Yeah, you don't make make it, just make them users. Don't let them install stuff. And then it's going to surprise you. Uh, we're going to have to get back to the rest of this list some other time. All right, let's do a quick plug for Capilani Community College. We're going to have a Wetware Wednesday, a mixer for all the software and IT people on Halloween. On Halloween. On Halloween, it's going to be great. great. Uh, we're going to keep up with that. And uh, we got uh, the cybersecurity program starting up in fall again. We're doing all our cybersecurity classes, and uh, uh, our ethical hacking class is going to be doing an actual penetration test. Nice. So hopefully nice. someone's listening out there will sign up for one of those classes. I'll just get more students involved, and, uh, and you'll be teaching the cybersecurity fundamentals and networking. Yep. We're going to have a great time. Thanks for being here. to it. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Cyber Underground. Until then, stay safe.